Hey, what's up guys, another video here. So today I wanna to talk about a quick update regarding the stimulus package. It looks like Pelosi and the Democrats are willing to compromise even more. So let's get to the news. Pelosi suggested that Democrats might be willing to take more cuts to their stimulus proposal to seal a deal with Republicans and speed illness relief, then come back after the November elections with additional agenda items. Quote, we're willing to cut our bill in half to meet the needs right now, she said on Tuesday at a political playbook event. We'll take it up again in January. Pelosi spokeswoman Drew Hamill later said that she was referring to previous offers to meet Republicans halfway, not cutting our bill in half. However, both sides are in a stalemate over a stimulus bill appeared to be probing for openings for a break that could restart negotiations. Mnuchin and McConnell said that Pelosi's decision to break out $25 billion in funding for the Postal Service from the original Democratic Relief Plan as an opening for talks. That could open the opportunity for discussion about something smaller than the Speaker and the Democratic Senate leader were insisting on as at the point of impasse, McConnell said. He added that the Senate was unlikely to take up the Democrats' post office bill, which the House is set to pass on Saturday. Pelosi said she's eager to get a stimulus package through Congress before lawmakers next month have to take up a bill needed to keep the government running when the new fiscal year starts on October 1st. The Trump administration has advocated a so-called skinny approach, pushing for a smaller package that addresses areas on which both sides agree. Okay, so it looks like Pelosi and the Democrats are willing to go down even further from the $2 trillion mark, you have to keep in mind that the original package that they suggested was around $3.4 trillion, so that would be about $1.7 trillion. But again, the spokesman for Pelosi stated that wasn't the case, but if we're referring to the latest talks where they were trying to meet at $2 trillion, the Democrats will have to go below that. So I'm guessing now because things are very dire that it's going to fall between $1.5 and perhaps $1.75 trillion. So we'll see. So they'll probably make concessions on the state and local aid we will see. And Trump and his administration looks like they're trying to pass a skinny type deal, which means that they'll go ahead and agree upon certain items such as a stimulus checks. So both the Democrats and Republicans are in agreement upon the $1,200 stimulus checks with the $500 per dependent. And again, this includes adult dependents. So if they do pass that, you know, kudos to them. But the likelihood of that happening by mid-September is still quite low. But I do like the idea because the election is coming up very quickly and you have the DNC and the RNC going on you know, people are busy and if they do pass a skinny bill, I think that's a smarter approach. So you pass the skinny bill first, which will primarily include the stimulus checks, which is going to be very costly. And then after the elections, whoever becomes president, let's say, you know, Sleepy Joe becomes president, then they may be able to pass it a little easier. However, the Republicans still will have control of the Senate. So I don't know how effective that'll be even if Sleepy Joe is president. So we'll have to see, but I do like this idea where a skinny bill is passed again with the stimulus checks. And then later on, they may agree upon the state, local aid, and so on and so forth, the other items regarding the current uh, stimulus package with the HEALS Act and the HEROES Act. So we'll see and uh, hopefully, you know, something gets resolved. But again, the skinny bill is still just simply a proposal. So we don't know what's going to happen, but I don't imagine anything will happen because we're already going toward the second half of August and nothing really has materialized. So anyways, hopefully that was a little helpful. Please like and subscribe. And if you are interested in my book, please check the link down below. It describes how I became a multimillionaire at age 35 by only having salary income 40K to 81.5K from the ages of 22 to 35. It goes over income, expenses, and more importantly, investing. So that's it guys and stay tuned for the next video.